Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be talking about some things which I did not know about Taiwan before I actually came to Taiwan. And of course, when I got here, I learned about those things pretty quickly. I'm currently at this really cool place in uh, Beito district and I'm at a place called Thermal Valley. Now Beito is very well known for its geothermal hot springs which contain acidic type sulfur and the smell isn't actually as bad as I thought it would be prior to coming here because if you look at the place and you see the amount of steam rising up off the water, you would automatically think that the smell would be very, very strong. And though it's definitely there, it's certainly not unbearable. So if you guys are in Beito, there are actually quite a few things to do here. So first of all, you can obviously come and take a look at the Thermal Valley, which is quite interesting. And another thing you can do is you can go to the Hot Spring Museum, which is probably like a five to 10 minute walk from the Thermal Valley. Near the museum, there's also like an open air hot spring soaking area. And that is really nice. It only costs around 40 NT to get in. Many people believe that soaking in natural hot springs is therapeutic and possibly has some health benefits. Some people claim that one of the reasons why hot spring soaking is so popular in Taiwan is that when the Japanese took control of Taiwan, they brought their hot spring soaking culture with them. And when they left, that's one of the things that they left behind here. As usual, I will put a link in the description of this video with all the details about Beto Thermal Valley and the surrounding areas. I would highly recommend that you guys come and take a look at this place. It's really awesome and very, very unique and special. Now, I think it's quite important to understand that back in those days, before I came to Taiwan, Google wasn't really a thing. And of course, we had the internet and computers and that sort of thing. But during that time, the main sort of method of obtaining information or knowledge about a certain topic was really just reading books, magazines, newspaper articles, watching TV, or speaking to someone who knew something about that topic. So the information available was fairly limited by today's standards. One of the first things that I was not expecting when I first came here and did not really know about was the amount of rainfall that Taiwan gets. And of course it totally makes sense because of Taiwan's geographic location. It is a very tropical island. It has a lot of lush green vegetation and jungly type vegetation. It's very beautiful and it's actually quite a wet, humid sort of place in general. One of the things that I really do like about the rain is that after it's rained and the sky clears and the sun comes out and you go outside, everything feels very fresh and crisp and clean. And that's because the rainwater has washed everything and it's quite a nice feeling for the first hour or two directly after it stopped raining. The next thing which I had absolutely no idea about were squat toilets. I have to be honest with you, I had never heard of or even seen a squat toilet. The closest thing that I can compare squat toilets to in South Africa was when we used to go camping and we'd be up in the mountains for a couple of days and we needed to go to the bathroom. We'd basically take a shovel and a roll of toilet paper, go far away from camp, dig a hole, and then we'd have to squat. Um, but other than that, I'd never seen squat toilets. And I've got to tell you, I'm not a big fan of squatting toilets. I'm just not used to it, even after being here for all these years, it's something that I just really struggle to get used to. So, however, many of the Japanese department store and some of the fancier and newer places will have regular toilets, including public toilets at MRT stations and that sort of thing. They'll usually have like three or four squat toilets, then they'll have like one or two 
regular, by our standards, normal toilets. The next thing which I wasn't quite aware of was the absolute abundance of natural beauty here in Taiwan. Now I knew that Taiwan was an island and I knew there would definitely be some beauty, but I had no idea that the terrain was so mountainous and the rivers were so beautiful and I just wasn't aware that it had so much natural beauty to offer. And one thing I would like to say, generally speaking, the cities are quite unique in that they have a sort of grungy sort of look, or should I say certain areas of certain cities have a kind of grimy, grungy kind of look. And personally, I don't mind that. It actually adds to the uniqueness and the charm of Taiwan, in my opinion. The next thing that I had no idea about were the damn cockroaches. Now, yes, we have cockroaches in South Africa, but because of Taiwan's warm tropical climates, cockroaches and bugs and other insects actually thrive in this type of climate. And I had no idea that there were so many cockroaches here in Taiwan. To demonstrate this point, I will share a short story with you. When I first got here, I was basically thrown into this like horrible little room. And yeah, it was out in the middle of nowhere. It was terrible. And one of the first things I remember when going into that room was that it was absolutely cockroach in Infested. It was like a whole colony of cockroaches living in there. So one of the first things I did was I went to the high life downstairs I got some like raid or doom or some kind of like insect poison stuff I went in there and I just sprayed them. I found their nest It was like a hole in the floor and I just got all of them and killed them And even though to this day when you're walking out on the street You will see cockroaches running around some of them get pretty big You can often see them in your apartments although we make a very concerted effort to keep our place clean because I don't hate cockroaches per se, but they are known to carry diseases and they're quite dirty. So we don't like them in our apartment at all. And we try our utmost best to get rid of them for sure. The next thing which I had no idea about prior to coming here, and it was a little bit surprising to be fair, was that the kitchens in most apartments here are actually incredibly small. And another thing about the kitchens which I found quite interesting and something which I really like was that nearly every single stove that I've seen in Taiwan uses gas. Now yes, of course we have gas in South Africa, but when I was growing up we always had electric hot plates or electric stoves. And to be honest with you, I actually prefer gas because it's instantaneous. Another thing which I had no idea about prior to coming here was the sheer abundance and variety of food that they have on offer in Taiwan. Now they have Japanese cuisine, Italian cuisine, American cuisine, Chinese cuisine, Thai cuisine, Korean cuisine, Taiwanese food obviously. I mean and the list goes on and there's just so much food everywhere and it's very very nice. Obviously it's something I enjoy and I know Taiwan's considered to be a bit of a foodies paradise by the international community so most people are aware of this fact. Another thing which I had no idea about prior to coming here was that there are a ton of bats in Taiwan and you see them at dusk flapping around like mad all over the place. I mean they're absolutely everywhere. Anyway what I'm trying to say is I like the fact that there are so many bats because there are a ton of mosquitoes in Taiwan and the mosquitoes here are a real issue. Uh, so the bats I think eat a lot of insects uh, so they kind of help to keep the mosquito population in check. Okay everybody that's the end of this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!